Welcome to the October 2020 edition of the Dr. Fausel Show. Today we will be discussing sexual disorders in men. Uh, thank you, Jose, for having me in this show today. Thank you, our audience, for watching this show. Uh, today we have a very important uh, topic to discuss, as uh, Jose mentioned, uh, sexual disorder in men. Uh, I will call it male rectal dis disorder or male erectile dysfunction uh, and it is the tip of the iceberg we know uh, sexual disorder exists both in men and females but today we're gonna focus mostly on men um, and again as I said uh, the incidence is pretty high a lot of men are either shy or they don't feel comfortable in discussing uh, uh, this important medical issue sometimes it's medical sometimes it's psychological issue with uh, the doctors so I encourage uh, men to talk to their primary care doctors uh, either to have them take care of that if they have an issue or have them send to appropriate specialists in this field uh, but I will give some uh, brief uh, uh, outlook and of the reasons and the treatment options uh, about this uh, disorder and Dr. Fazo, what are the most common reasons for men's sexual disorder? So, in, uh, uh, it can happen in any age group, you know, as, uh, you know, in, uh, after age 50, it's obviously more common than in a younger population. Uh, but um, the most common cause, what I have seen, is a medication side effect. So, again, if we have to define it broadly speaking, it's psychological or or organic in nature. Psychological means this, that your brain is not having that uh, motion or emotion, I will call it, to ha or desire to have sex. This uh, disorder, the cause of this disorder in two categories, psychological and non-psychological. Psychological is where there's something uh, uh, in the mind where <clears throat> a men don't have a desire or their libido is lower than normal and that could be due to depression pain or any other uh, uh, psychological disorder uh, which can cause effect on your body will affect your uh, sexual desire as well now uh, the organic one means that there's something wrong with uh, the male genitalia uh, in causing uh, function uh, in the sexual performance. Now, that could be due to, uh, for example, poor blood supply due to the plaque buildup in the arteries of the male organ, and uh, sometimes it is hormonal disorder. That means there's the lack of testosterone, which is very common actually. So, going from one, two, and three, and four, the first cause is most likely psychological and the way we differentiate it is that if uh, men have early morning erection then most likely it's psychological because they have erection but they uh, don't have it when they want it so obviously it has to be uh, psychological and there's some machines available you go to the specialist they can demonstrate it they can document it to prove it is psychological or not psychological the second one is organic now, organic could be due to medication side effect and which is actually the most common cause in my practice I've seen a lot of patients which take medications for example um, you know antidepressant medications some blood pressure medication for example uh, like toprol metoprolol uh, or um, depression medication for example Larica or gabapentin that will cause sexual uh, dysfunction now uh, the other cause is uh, low testosterone. So that's why we check the testosterone level in the blood and uh, if it is low and patients have uh, issue in this regard, then we can uh, recommend them the replacement treatment. Uh, the, the few other causes as I said could be due to the poor blood supply. Sometimes it is a damage to the nerve. People who are diabetic and their diabetes has not been controlled uh, they can damage the nerves and then the nerve supply to uh, the penile area can cause also 
lack of erection and uh, male sexual disorder. Uh, but that's not very common. The uh, common causes are psychological uh, medication side effect. Uh, then number three is uh, low testosterone, then poor blood supply, and then neurogenic disorder. Or neurogenic could be due to multiple reasons. For example, diabetes is one of them. Then is, you know, certain STDs, sexual transmitted diseases, can cause stricter formation in the urethra, for example, you know, as we know, like syphilis and herpes and gonorrhea, uh, all those things can uh, cause uh, male sexual dysfunction. So we need to check all of those. So we go, when we evaluate uh, the patient, we go through the history, physical exam, and then lab testing to find the cause. Once you find the cause, then we can fix it. And it's a fixable disease, but again, just like anything else, you have to diagnose first to make a treatment plan. Okay, Dr. Fazo, let's talk about the testosterone replacement. Is there any side effect from using testosterone replacement? So that's a good question. Uh, the testosterone is uh, it physiologically drops with the age. So it's not going to be the same level as somebody who's 18 years old versus some who's 80 years old. So there's a physiological drop. So not everybody is a candidate to replace. So if you do a test and the testosterone level is, no, is low, you're not automatically going to replace it. Uh, the indication for replacement is that low testosterone with a uh, patient having problem with sexual uh, performance. And then there should not be any contraindications. And the contraindications are uh, any like prostate cancer, any heart problem or stroke, you know, uh, because it, it can uh, put a higher risk for those complications. So we tend not to uh, prescribe um, uh, medication to the patient which have underlying those conditions. And if they don't have it, we still have to monitor them uh, with the routine blood test and examination that they don't, they're not developing those symptoms. We check their levels, you know, the normal levels, I would say it will be around 500. Uh, and then, uh, um, you know, we got to do uh, blood tests routinely to make sure the uh, prostate uh, level is normal, their, uh, heart, their liver function test is normal, and the testosterone level is where it's supposed to be and not too high or too low. And if it's too high or too low, we adjust a dose. And also, uh, sometimes it can mix too much blood cells, so we have to make sure the blood is not getting too thick. So those all are checked through the lab testing, uh, and uh, it's pretty common treatment for men who are lacking uh, the adequate level of testosterone. And Dr. Falzo, in what forms is the testosterone available to patients? So the testosterone is available uh, either intramuscular injections. Uh, now they have some pellets as well, which can be important in the muscles and. Uh, they're more expensive, they're not covered by insurance, but injections are covered by insurance. Um, they are also available as a cream. You can uh, rub the cream or ointment on your uh, shoulder every day. Uh, the cream is once a day. Uh, the injection is every two weeks or once a month. Sometimes you give it weekly also depending on the levels. Um, there's no pills available at this time. There's some available, there's some pills which is release uh, precursor of testosterone known as DHEA uh, but they have a lot of side effects and uh, the journey they are advertised you know in the healthcare pharmacies or internet uh, but uh, they're not real actually so please be aware of that uh, there's no pill for testosterone those pills which are being advertised as testosterone they are actually the um, the precursor of testosterone, like DHEA tablets, uh, but they do have a lot of side effects, uh, especially on the liver. So I would not recommend that. Uh, so if you have to uh, go to the replacement option, then either the injections, which are given weekly, bi-weekly, or monthly, or the cream, uh, the creams are rubbed uh, on, the, on the shoulders, so it is used on the skin. Um, but mostly those are not covered by the insurance companies. So the most common version is intramuscular injections. And as I said, there's another version uh, with like a pallet which can be implanted to a gun inside the muscle. 
uh, those pellets can last for six months and then they can be uh, you know uh, can be used uh, they can be given every six months so but also they are not covered by insurance so uh, I think the most practical approach is the intramuscular injections because they're cheap they're covered and we know they're gonna get uh, absorbed into the body uh, directly uh, subcutaneous one, the one which are rubbed on shoulders, they're messy, they're expensive, and their absorption rate is not very predictable. So um, my uh, suggestion would be if you are in going in the direction of uh, hormonal replacement treatment uh, for testosterone, maybe intramuscular injection might be a way to go. All right, I want to thank the audience for joining us for this episode of the Dr. Fazo Show. Stay tuned for next month's edition of the Dr. Fazo Show. Thank you audience and thank you Jose for having me in the show. Uh, stay tuned, as I said, uh, don't be shy. Men's sexual disorder is very common. Uh, please don't be shy to talk to your primary care doctor about this condition. There are a lot of treatment options available. So do ask your doctor if there's any option uh, available to diagnose and treat it. And as I said in my discussion today, we do have a lot of options. So on that note, please stay tuned. Thank you for watching this show, and I will be back next month.